Hi, it's Nancy Heimball at Tyler Arboretum. Summer is the time for butterflies. Um, whether or not the butterfly house is open, there are plenty of spots you can visit around Tyler Arboretum and find butterflies, their caterpillars, and even some of their eggs. We're gonna take a stroll today and we're gonna go around to the different places and take a closer look at what you can see. First, I'd like to show you some pictures of some of the butterflies, caterpillars, and eggs that we might come across today. So let's take a minute and review them. Black swallowtails, their caterpillars, and their eggs are first up. The monarch butterfly, the monarch caterpillar, and the monarch egg. Next is the painted lady butterfly. The common buckeye. The great spangled fritillary. Then one of the sulfurs. A cabbage white. The Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. And two different skippers. The first is a Zebulon skipper, and the second is Silver Spotted Skipper. And last, we have one of the Cecropia Moths Caterpillars. So let's get started. We're going to first go to the pollinator garden and the fragrant garden next to the barn. I'll see you there in a minute. We've reached the fragrant garden. The top two tiers are planted with herbs and the bottom tier is a perennial border. I also want to mention that right on the long side of here is the barn garden. You'll find lots of perennials in there that the butterflies will just flock to. August you'll see lots of purple echinacea, then the asters will begin and they are just covered with flowers, butterflies and bees. So don't forget to stop there. But first we're going to take a closer look up here at the uh, perennial border where we'll find some bronze fennel. This is a host plant for the black swallowtail. So that's the plant that the caterpillars will eat until they are um, finish their caterpillar cycle and then transform into a butterfly. But they need that host plant to survive. So let's go in and take a closer look. Every few feet here you're going to find some of the bronze fennel. It's this plant here. Very fine leaves yellowish green flowers about three to four feet tall these self-seed every year a little bit and we always have plants returning some folks tell me that they are upset when the caterpillars get on their parsley at home so bronze fennel is a nice plant to have move your caterpillars from the parsley over to the bronze fennel they'll be perfectly happy and you can still have your parsley let's go in closer up here to this plant you can see how fine the leaves are Right here though, there's an egg right above my thumb. They're very small and you need to get used to finding them. It's hard to get a clear picture here, but there it is. And it takes about four days to hatch. So if we come back here in a few days, we might be lucky enough to find the caterpillar. He'll, he'll be brown and go through various stages as he grows, ending up green, yellow, and black. Up on the second tier now, this, is, this plant is called Anis hyssop, and it's a great nectar plant for bees, butterflies, and in about a month, the goldfinches will flock here for the seeds. So I would check this out for butterflies while you're here. You just never know what you might find because it can be covered with butterflies. Now we're up at the higher level between the second and third tiers. This purple plant is Monarda. Again, a great nectar plant for many, many butterflies. So 
Butterflies will stick to their host plant for their caterpillars. And a host plant is the food that their caterpillars are able to eat. And for many, many of our butterflies, there's a very limited number of plants they can eat. So this is a nectar plant here. We'll cross over to the other side. You can see all the herbs, sage, and here's yarrow. This is another great nectar plant. Bright, bright yellow at the very end of the row. the cistern garden. There's many perennial plants planted here to provide nectar for bees, butterflies, and skippers. There's also some host plants to provide food for the caterpillars. So it's morning and there's already some bees out. There's an, another anise hyssop that we saw earlier in the fragrant garden. And then the, my feet there is a milkweed. This is butterfly weed and it's a host plant for the monarch. If we take a closer look down here, we can see a monarch munching on one of the leaves. He's pretty big, so he'll be making his chrysalis in a day or two, I imagine, where he'll hang out for 10 days and emerge as a monarch butterfly. So take a walk all the way around the cistern and you'll be able to spot many butterflies, bees, and skippers. Next, we're going to go to the butterfly house. The gardens outside have a lot of perennials, so we'll take a look there. Here we are outside the butterfly house. I'm sure most of you have been through the butterfly house and seen the caterpillars and the butterflies and the rearing cage where the monarchs turn from a caterpillar into a chrysalis and then we wait about 10 days and they emerge as monarchs. Today we're going to look at the plants inside and outside and look for some of the caterpillars or butterflies we might find. So let's start our search right here outside the butterfly house. I'm going to flip the camera around we're gonna start our search outside the butterfly house. In front of me is a bronze fennel. And as we talked about earlier, this is a host plant for the black swallowtail. And here we have a caterpillar, black swallowed caterpillar. So he's about halfway through his caterpillar stage and he's got a lot of growing to do, but he'll eat quite a bit in the next week. Let's move on and see what else we can find. There's another bronze fennel plant. So take a look at these. You're apt to find something. This flowering plant here is Cleome. It's a nice nectar plant for bees and butterflies. There's some skippers on here right now, flitting around. And here we have a Joe pie weed just coming into flower. So we're right outside the butterhouse door. We can see that there's an Eastern tiger swallowtail here now. I've actually seen eight or ten on here at once so make sure you take a quick look here you'll see bees and butterflies most likely and there's a bunch of skippers floating around again let's go on in the door historically we have a lot of monarchs in here we have cecropias in here some black swallowtails cabbage whites so in front of me is the uh, milkweed plant, common milkweed, host plant to the monarchs. Right here, these holes indicate that a monarch has been here in the past. 
eating so the eggs were laid underneath um, there's none here right now so they've probably moved on so I would look at these common milkweeds for the monarchs as you walk through so there's quite a bit of nectar plants in here echinacea again some phlox the pink some of these plants have not flowered yet more Joe Pie weed is up here. So I know that there are over 25 monarch eggs that were in here. And we're at the cherry tree where the Cecropia caterpillars entertain us for most of the summer. Um, we placed about 24 caterpillars here last week at the very end of July, which is what one of our friends of Tyler donates to us each year so we can enjoy these. So take a look at this tree and see if you can spot any. They might be brown at this stage, soon to turn to their green color that we know so well. And rounding out up near the door again, another Joe Pie weed, which is just about to flower. All of August, this should be in wonderful flower and lots of pollinators on it. I would continue your walk around the butterfly house. There's perennials around there and just see what you can find. Good luck. Lucille's garden now. There are flowers planted about to attract pollinators so the vegetables also get pollinated. There's herbs in here, the four center blocks. Some of these are host plants for the black swallowtail, butterflies, the dill, fennel, and if there's any parsley. And then there's flowers outside. So often there's monarchs over there, swallowtails. So make sure you stop here and see what you can find. As we leave the edible garden, we're gonna head up the scenic route past the pond up to gate four. There's a meadow out there I want you to take a look at. I'll meet you up there. We're on the scenic route as you get to the drive off to gate four so if you're coming out from the visitor center it's on your right so you can see there's the yellow eastern tiger swallowtails here a couple of them some monarch here on the cone flower there's a black swallowtail towards the back that's wild bergamot there's another one back there so this is a good spot right now and probably will be through early september at least Look, once the asters come out, it'll continue to be a good spot for nectar for the butterflies. I'm up in the milkweed meadow, which is outside gate four. You need to walk probably about 10 minutes and you'll find a meadow just filled with milkweed. This is common milkweed and this plant right here in front of me has a lot of holes in its leaves, which is a good sign that monarch caterpillars have been here. Late eggs were laid here and they hatched here and these little holes are signs that they had their very first meals here. So let's take a look under this plant here that has a couple of holes. And here we see right here a tiny little caterpillar. He's a couple days old at the most. So you'll find anywhere from these tiny ones that are not even a quarter of an inch long all the way up to a couple of inches and big and chunky. Happy hunting! As we end our tour, let's take a look at these Cecropia caterpillars and their antics. If you'd like to plant some of these host plants, you're bound to have caterpillars and be able to watch them grow 
and eventually emerge as butterflies. Remember not to touch them, just enjoy them and learn from them. We are so glad you joined us and can't wait to see you at Tyler.